Welcome to eDiscovery Leaders Live, where I get a chance to chat with luminaries in eDiscovery and related areas. This broadcast is sponsored by Reveal Brain Space, the industry's leading AI eDiscovery platform. Don't forget to subscribe to watch me, George Sosha, weekly with leaders in eDiscovery. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to eDiscovery Leaders Live, hosted by ASETS and sponsored by Reveal. I am George Sosha, Senior Vice President of Brand Awareness at Reveal. Each Friday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, I host an episode of eDiscovery Leaders Live where I get the chance to speak with luminaries in eDiscovery and related areas. Past episodes are available on the Reveal website. Go to revealdata.com, select resources, then select eDiscovery Leaders Live. I have two guests with me this week, um, Chuck Volkert with Protivity and Jamie Sullivan with Robert Half Legal. They are um, related organizations, as you might have surmised. Jamie is executive director of the legal practice at Robert Half, Robert Half, a premier talent solutions firm. She's an author and speaker on legal employment and practice management topics. She began her career with Robert Half in 2002 as an account executive in Columbus, Ohio. Over the years, she's held various management positions within the company and received recognition for serving on project committees, mentoring internal employees, and her leadership performance. Jamie is based in Dallas and became executive director in 2016. She manages operations for the legal practice in North America. Before joining Robert Half, she worked as a law clerk at an Ohio law firm and for the Ohio State Legislature. Chad, Chad Volkert, is the global solutions leader for Protivity Legal Consulting and a member of the firm's global solutions leadership team. He brings more than 22 years of legal optimization and executive management expertise to his clients in the US and around the world. He focuses on providing the C-suite in-house counsel and law firm leadership expertise in the areas of legal department transformation, hiring and retaining talent, we're going to keep coming back to talent today. Litigation e-discovery, contract management, data privacy, mergers and acquisitions, and strategic business solutions. So welcome, Jamie. Jamie, welcome, Chad. And as I warned you, I would, from time to time, stumble over my words. <laughs> Great to be here, George. Thanks, George. Very excited right. today. Glad to have the two of you with me. Today, we're going to focus on two related areas. Uh, each of you bringing expertise from that particular area. One is alternative legal services and the companion to that, alternative legal service providers or ALSPs. And the other is talent, the people who do all the work and make things happen and the impact on, uh, on talent for both. And so ALSPs, talent, how they all come together for e-discovery, for law firms, and corporate legal departments. I think it will help to start with some definitions. And Chad, I want to turn to you first. The term alternative legal services is bandied about quite a bit these days, but what does it mean? It's a great question, George. And again, happy to be with you and your listeners. Um, you know, the alternative legal services is a little bit of a, of a misnomer at this point due to the fact that many years ago, it was an alternative legal service, right? Um, but today, alternative legal services and the providers offer a broad range of routine and also specialized services to both corporate legal departments and law firms. It's a growing area. Um, you know, most studies show that by the end of 2025, the spend with alternative legal service providers is going to be in excess of $20 billion. Um, and, you know, the partnership that they now have, as I call it, a bit of a triangle, George, between the corporate legal department, 
their trusted outside and crucial outside counsel, as well as that trusted alternative resource, really provide uh, a fantastic solutions for organizations as we look to the future of what the legal industry has in store. I'm going to jump about it a little bit here because there's something you said there that sparked a question in my mind, which is at what point might we stop talking about what we now consider as alternative legal services as anything other than legal services and perhaps even talk about what law firms traditionally do deliver as some form of alternative legal services? Sure. You know, I don't have a crystal ball, George. Um, so, you know, the the ALSP moniker is used uh, in some respects as a catch all. Um, law firms, to your point, are offering sophisticated practice of law. The ALSPs are offering legal services and some of the efficiencies in and around um, larger scale engagements, maybe some more day-to-day -day routine functions and certainly technology expertise within that segment in partnership with those law firms delivering um, solutions to corporate legal departments. But it's here to stay. I think, you know, dropping alternative at this point is certainly uh, something that many organizations are doing because this is a, a tested and proven model, both for independent organizations as well as maybe law firms that have the bandwidth to offer some of those additional services themselves. Can you um, give us some, some specifics? Am I, if I'm in a corporate legal department, why? what functions might I use an ALSP for? Absolutely. You know, what we see first and foremost in our practice is conversations in and around legal department optimization, sitting down with in-house counsel and then uh, in many respects, sometimes outside counsel and looking at ways on how they're handling legal work and looking for areas of opportunities to create efficiencies. That may be in and around your traditional um, e-discovery and document review programs that, again, going back to the federal rule change in 2006, has certainly become a, a large industry, but also with contract review and CLM life cycle contract management, uh, additional focus on privacy expertise in conjunction with data security technology capabilities, large scale corporate investigations, again, in tandem with outside counsel, but a lot of industry expertise at the project management level and additional candidates and talent that I know Jamie and you will talk more about to be able to come in and handle those larger scale engagements. And we also see work within due diligence of M&A, uh, as well as intellectual property and the type of case management that may be involved there. How, how would it differ if I took off the in-house legal hat and put on the law firm partner hat? It's interesting, George. We uh, partner extensively with law firms to provide a global solution for their corporate clients. At Protivity, not only do we have legal consulting as an example, but we have risk and compliance, forensics, accounting, technology, and digital on the forefront. And many of these um, areas are interconnected for a corporation when they're dealing with legal issues. And so our partnership with law firms is strong to not only offer alternative legal uh, options for the law firm, but also to bring in additional consulting capabilities that really are necessary when companies are dealing with a broad spectrum of issues, ultimately uh, resulting in potential risk or other legal based issues as they go forward. Jamie. None of this happens without people, without talent. And there are terms bandied about with respect to talent that to a certain extent are uh, mysterious to me. Mm -hmm. Things like talent models or what talent management strategies or things like that. What are these terms? What do they mean for us? Sure. And also thank you again for having me on today, George. Always great to partner with Chad on these discussions. 
Uh, but as it relates to talent models and really the strategies that are out there, it's critical, first of all, in the business landscape. You have to really define what your talent management strategy is going to be, and you have to be proactive in that approach to make sure that you are securing the right talent. And ultimately, you have to keep them engaged once you have them so that you can uh, grow and optimize in your company's capabilities or your law firm's capabilities. And that way you can achieve your goals and your objectives. And many ALSPs are really looking for um, how do they not only look for that strategic plan, but how do they uh, manage performance along the way? How are they assessing and assuring that they're offering competitive compensation packages along the way. Also career training, development, mentorship, that is a huge piece as well in the strategy. And then of course, offering remote work for employees. Uh, this also then allows them to tap into a different source of talent uh, since they're open to that remote world. We also have really seen the strategy of using uh, a labor model that's based on a flexible mix of talent. So we're talking about full time, of course, as part time contract project based. That way you can really optimize and achieve uh, what you're looking to do. And an interesting note, as I was thinking about this, tech knowledge and applications serve as the foundation for many ALSPs. And many have mastered the ability to already provide those services remotely. And this has really come to the forefront, uh, been an advantage for them during the pandemic, as they already had mastered that remote with their teams and being able to provide virtual support and services to their clients. And the last thing I would add, you have to think about the extension, right? The law firms and the legal departments are looking at ALSPs as that extension to their departments. So that is a critical part to the talent sourcing strategy as well. Yeah, I think to back to my time helping manage at least a few portions of a law firm or a couple of different law firms. And we constantly needed to make decisions about who did we hire uh, as employees? Who did we use as outsourced, outs, outsourced resources? When did we um, bring someone on board on a contract basis with the possibility of converting that to a, a full-time employee basis. So they're all, all of that was going on. And at the same time, we would think about my analogy is to a power plant. You want to have a certain level of day in, day out capability, but you're going to get surges and you've got to be able to deal with those. And then add in, you're going to need experience that you don't want to maintain all the time. It sounds like you fit in very well with all of those parts, right? Well, I would hope so. <laughs> uh, we're really partnering with, you know, as, as you described, law firms, but corporations to assess what are those skills, those competencies that they need, where are the gaps that they currently have, as you've mentioned. So thinking of a broad range of technologies, uh, consulting services, looking at that broad band, and, and ultimately, like, you know, find individuals that have artificial intelligence knowledge they bring to the table? Do they know how to assess procedures and processes and really standardize that? Can they uh, clearly assess workflows? Can they recommend a resource allocation program? So these are all really important skills, uh, competencies that many of our clients are looking for for us to help them identify. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's going to be different depending on the ALSP and what they're offering on what specialized skills they might be looking to bring to the table or, again, where those gaps might be that you need to assess and look to a broader uh, capability out there. George, I, I George. think you, you yep. went off mic. Yeah, yep. I, I've got to wait for De Deja controls everything. I have to wait <laughs> for her to take me off mute and let me talk again. Um, if you, so if someone in, and I'll start again with a corporate legal department, um, is not familiar with working with someone like you and with Robert Half, what should they expect? What, what, what's that process look like for them? Well, we're going to take a step back first and understand fully that organization 
their journey, right? We've gonna, we're gonna do our homework in advance to make sure that we truly understand their jersey, journey and how they've evolved, but then sitting down and really partnering with what are your current goals and objectives? What's that next level that you're getting to? Where do you think those gaps are? And then insert us into really the department and understanding uh, who are those individuals that are making those decisions? Who do you want us to partner with? So that, again, I'm using the word partner quite a bit here. We want to be seen as a partnership to an organization so that they know we're in the trenches with them to help them achieve their objectives and the goals that they're searching to do. Um, similar question then, but instead of um, corporate legal department, law firm. How would that differ? Same. I want to be a partner as well. Uh, I think ultimately, you know, one of the things that I've learned over my 20 years in the business is we want to make sure that law firms are really assessing how they're looking at themselves as a business. And so that's one thing that we've learned is how do we partner with you from a business perspective to make sure you're bringing in additional staff that's going to help elevate your game for your end client or again, bring to the table new practice areas that you haven't previously maybe dabbled in or been as strong in, so you can bring additional clients to the table or service your client in more buckets than what you previously had been servicing them. So I think that would be the ultimate way that I've, it's a partnership, but still really helping them assess their business again and where those gaps are. That suggests to me, and I'll put this as a, as a question, um, to what extent does that partnership mean that you are not um, simply responding to the requests from the corporate legal department or law firm, but rather going beyond that to perhaps suggest people, suggest Chad for you processes and services that the organization might not even be considering at this point. Jamie, let's start with you and then Chad. Yeah, we if we wouldn't be in the business if we didn't come to the table after we've assessed with recommendations. And quite often we are talking with law firms and corporations and providing them a testimonial or an example of a competitor of theirs that we've partnered with before and how we help solve for any of their problems or solve for their hiring. So that's where that recommendation, real world experience comes into play that we're able to articulate to our clients that creates that better partnership. And Chad? I would echo uh, Jamie's comments. I think, George, you know, the word we focus on is collaboration as well. Sitting down and understanding a client's business, how they're currently handling their legal workflow, other processes within the organization, getting a keen understanding of how all of the wheels turn, and then looking for ways that we are able to become a trusted resource and a provider of solutions across a wide spectrum of capabilities. We don't have all of the answers. And so we also will go back into our innovation labs and some of our other sort of R&D areas and begin to pose problems that clients have detailed to us that may be new or, or cutting edge issues as rules and regulations change and come back to them with suggestions, not only on things that we might be able to do, but all, also other business partners within the industry that we would bring to bear to help them solve their issues. We're really looking for an A to Z type of a relationship over the lifespan of the organization as they continue to grow and evolve themselves. You mentioned innovation labs and research and development areas. What's your innovation lab? So we've got a global innovation uh, program at ProTivity. As you can imagine, we're located in 26 countries, thousands of full-time consultants around the globe. And we come across issues every single day, both internally as a fortune company and part of Robert Half overall, which is now north of a $6 billion organization, as well as our, our clients. And problems come up and we bring members, a wide variety of members at all levels of their consulting careers into um, a six and 12 month innovation program where they literally sit every day and work on client problems and how to evolve our solutions to be the best thing that the client has seen and thinking outside of the box. 
Uh, again, part of that, George, is partnering with other businesses within the organization. There's one thing we are not. We are not a technology company. We partner with experts like you at Reveal um, and Brainspace, as well as others, depending on the different segments of business, to bring that type of expertise to bear. We may do the same within other industries, always looking to take our solutions to the next level for the client. So part of your answer, Chad, takes me back to you, Jamie. Uh, the other side of the equation is not just the people you make available to the law firms and corporate legal departments, but the people you hire, the people you bring on board. Why would someone go work for an ALSP? Well, first and foremost, I say you have options, right? It's such a growing and innovative landscape. And if you have traditional, we'll call it legal skills, uh, but you're more innovative, you're more creative, this is your opportunity to work in a unique and a dynamic position in an evolving legal landscape. Also, contract work for ALSPs is really appealing to legal professionals. Uh, you think about coming out of the pandemic, many are looking to strike that balance between work life and personal life balance, right? So ALSPs often provide that. Uh, they also provide autonomy more than maybe your traditional roles. So there's a number of different reasons I could say, but those would be my top. Um, and I think also just to, to tackle one thing that Chad was commenting on, is if you're about tech, right? Tech applications, and again, that evolving landscape, why more importantly, you would be interested in going into an ALSP career. So Amy, for people who are thinking about pursuing uh, a, a, a career or a position in alternative legal services, looking for a, something with an ALSP, what tips do you have for those folks? Well, there's three avenues you could take, right? One, doing your own research and applying to your own jobs. Two, you could partner with a specialized talent solutions firm. Or three, you could do a combination of both. So uh, first kind of set off on your path with that. But then start to do your first research on what are those positions that are interesting to you? And what are the relevant skills and competencies that are required within those? and then assess your own capabilities. And so as I talked about, when we partner with individuals, assessing where gaps might be in an organization, you wanna do the same thing for yourself. So that way, if you're looking to enter into that career, where do you need to potentially uh, get additional skills, experience, et cetera? I would also recommend to seek mentors. They can provide you advice. They can give you guidance. They can really help expand your knowledge on what the available opportunities are out there. And this can obviously optimize your job search. Networking is key. So ramping up any sort of connections, whether that's through professional organizations in a local standpoint or on a national level, uh, LinkedIn, you know, just making sure that you're networking. This gives you an opportunity in that ALSP space as well to learn more. Make sure you're casting a very wide net uh, in how you search and then also setting those alerts. So that was one of my favorite things. If I was learning about a role, if I could set alerts uh, on those positions being posted, then I was gathering more knowledge on what are potential employers looking for. And again, are there any sort of repetition in the skills that they're seeking out there? Again, where are those lacking spots? But at least you start to get a really good landscape of what's available out there. Make sure your resume is, of course, up to date, your cover letter is up to date. Uh, I think everybody knows that's a standard, but you do want to tweak it for every single job that you're applying to. Uh, just nuances, right, to make sure you're aligning it with what that particular organization is looking for. And then do your research on those organizations so that you are prepared should you get the interview. Uh, what is their workplace culture? What are their values? Uh, and making sure that you're able to incorporate that, of course, into your interview process. And of course, I'd have to say, if you're going to work with a legal recruiter, you're going to get the benefit of their knowledge of the companies and the projects that are out there that your skill set might align with. And they can also provide you 
uh, resume guidance, but also prep you for job interviews and then ultimately help you negotiate any offers and compensation that you are offered at the end of it all. So in our game of ping pong, I'm going to bounce back to you, Chad, now and, and ask, I know you said earlier, you don't, you don't have a crystal ball, but you do have eyes on the market today and probably some thoughts about the future, which I'll come back to. Eyes on the market today, what factors are contributing to uh, the growth and the and what we all know is the growth in the, the uh, ALS market? George, I think there continues to be a focus on operational effectiveness within organizations, how they handle their problems. They're becoming more complex by the day. Whether cross-border issues are coming into play, changing regulations, the various nuances of privacy, which continue to be a concern, data security, and all the things that go with that. And companies are looking, as are their outside counsels, to provide answers to these moving pieces. And organizations look to legal counsel, first and foremost, for a lot of those answers. And I think the driving factor of the growth in this industry is not only the people, process, and procedure points that our organization may handle, but how technology, how the changing rules and regulations all come to play uh, to be able to provide great solutions. And with complex problems, you, you know, come the need for complex solutions that can be streamlined and offered into corporations. And that's why we continue to see the growth of the ALSP market um, in combination with other services being offered out there, George. And Jamie, for you, similar question. Um, can you provide an overview of current trends in today's legal hiring market? Yes, thanks, George. I would say that there's multiple surveys and research going on out there. And the resounding theme is that legal organizations continue to struggle to find legal talent. In fact, our recent survey says nine out of 10 say that it's really difficult to recruit and find the right talent. And we know that that's going to continue to be a concern. Also, retention, as I had mentioned earlier, you know, losing staff members is also an exceeding uh, concern that we're facing right now in the market. So ensuring that you have a good balance and a good approach, a strategic plan, as I mentioned, uh, we've seen in the areas of litigation, uh, corporate transactional, real estate and intellectual property are some of the hottest areas right now uh, where attorneys and paralegals are being hired, but also law firms, legal departments, and ALSPs are seeking legal professionals that are specialized with litigation support specialists, uh, contract management, compliance analysts, data privacy specialists, all of this, you can see common themes that overlap with many of the things that Chad has already mentioned. And then e-discovery jobs are in demand. So thinking of litigation support, uh, e-discovery directors, uh, even specialists and as an e-discovery specialist, these are all really important roles that we continue to see are in demand in the current market. And we don't expect that to change in any way, shape or form. Well, I'm now coming back to you and asking you to do the impossible, which is predict the future. Pull out your crystal balls and each one of you, uh, Chad, I'll start with you. And then you, Jamie, same question. What do you envision for the ALS market five or 10 years you choose from now? What's the future look like, Chad? I see increased collaboration amongst law firms, corporations, and the ALSP market. You think today in a Thomson Reuters and Georgetown Law research paper, 79% um, of law firms already, George, are using an ALSP and 70% of corporations. Um, now there's a wide variety as we know out there, but I see that trend continuing to grow uh, based on my earlier comments about the need to handle complex problems that are across the globe, uh, need trusted advisors and trusted resources to get those problems handled. And Jamie, Hugh? Yeah, I definitely agree with Chad's comments. And uh, as he emphasizes collaboration, I can continue to emphasize innovation. 
you know, ALS is a dynamic business landscape. We will continue to see it evolve. We'll continue to see legal landscape evolve and create new and innovative resources to help organizations really add value uh, to their objectives as well as to their clients' objectives. And at this point, we know that will also lend itself then to the employment opportunities for legal talent and to increase their opportunities in the alternative career path available. Well, we'll check back with you in five years, 10 years, or maybe just five months. Who knows? Um, Jamie Sullivan is executive director of the legal practice at Robert Half, a premier talent solutions firm. Chad Volkert is the global solutions leader for, for Protivity Legal Consulting and a member of the firm's global solutions leadership team. I am George Sosha. This has been eDiscovery Leaders Live, hosted by ACES and sponsored by Reveal. Jamie, Chad, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, George. Thank you, George.